Well, first of all, I think all of her thoughts quite rightly are with his family and his friends. And what I would say is that, look, David was a friend of everybody in Parliament. He will be a major void. How can we have this senior politician who knew everybody, who was the life and soul of Parliament, who always wanted to talk about his constituents, always talking about animal welfare. He was a friend to all. He was acknowledged as a senior member of Parliament, but such a great guy that's been robbed, robbed of Parliament again. This, it, you know, we can't afford for democracy to be smashed. We've got to look at how and what has happened here. And what I want to say is, David, as I say, a stalwart of Parliament, a great man, a lovely man, who stood up for animal rights, who stood up for what he believed in, a man who stood up for the people of South End. He loved being an MP. He loved serving his constituents. And he has been killed serving his constituents. I never thought I would have that phone call again. And it was the tragic news today. I'm in shock. MPs are in shock right across all political parties. The one thing is that I can tell you now, we are united in our thoughts for David, his family, and everyone who knew him. And the one thing we do know, nothing will stop democracy. Nothing will stop us carrying out our duties. What I've got to say is, those people who don't value the job that we do, those people who don't support us, will not win. Hence why I've had my surgery tonight. Yes, you uh, uh, clearly are uh, very uh, moved and upset by this, uh, as so many will be in Westminster. And no doubt you'll echo the words of uh, Theresa May uh, when she said that this is a sad day for democracy. It's an awful day for democracy. Not only is it sad, it is very challenging for democracy. The one thing we all hold dear, we may have different political views across the House, but the one thing that unites us... We believe in the democratic process. It's so important to us. It's the value that we cherish. It's what we stand for. We represent our constituents. And to be killed represent our constituents is not, not right. It's not right that somebody who wants to do the right thing by people is taken away from us. Absolutely leaving that void in power is not acceptable. And I've got to say, the tributes will be there on Monday. We will be leading with tributes to David. His life, what he stood for, the values that he helped held, the fact that he always wanted to be an MP, who was a great MP, a senior member of the House, as I say, nobody can believe it. We're all in shock. And what I've got to do is support colleagues through this. We've got to support MPs, their staff and their families, and the House staff as well. They matter to me. But nobody will beat democracy. Democracy must survive. We may get challenged, but that challenge will never win. And I've got to say, David, lovely man, a great man, a friend to us all. Of course, democracy uh, will and must survive, um, and questions will come, won't they? And perhaps today isn't the right day for those questions, but constituency surgeries must continue as well. How can we make them safer? Well, I've carried out with my surgery. I spoke to my staff tonight and said, are you comfortable carrying on with my surgery? Absolutely. The people of Chorley expect to see the Member of Parliament. I've been meeting with them. And what we've got to do, and you're quite right, today is not the day, but what we will do, and we will continue to do, is always look at security measures, how we can improve them. Obviously, I won't go into the details of what we do, but what I will say is we won't sit back on our laurels. Of course, we know the challenges. We've got to protect MPs and allow them to carry out their duties, the duties that the electorate put them there for, to speak, to meet, and to make sure that their views are conveyed to Parliament. So I've got to say that people who won't, don't accept our values will not win. But at the moment, we don't want a knee-jerk reaction now. But what I can tell you is, of course, we're going to be looking into issues. I've been speaking with the Home Secretary already. We're getting reassurances out there to MPs. And in fairness, Chief Constables up and down this country are speaking to MPs to reassure them. And it's about reassuring people at this stage. And then afterwards, we will take out further measures, if needed.
Do we need a kinder discourse? Some of the language used by politicians, journalists and others has become toxic, hasn't it, of late? Do we need to rethink that? I always believe in nicer politics. I believe in politics where we won't agree, but what we must do is tolerate, but respect. It's about respecting other people's views and opinions. That will always matter. And it's about ensuring there is respect to the job that politicians carry out. Respect from the electorate. Even if they didn't vote for them, MPs take up their cases. They will look after them. And what I would say is, and I genuinely mean this, that we need a nicer politics across the world. It's not just this country. And it's a better respect of politicians. Politicians do have a duty of care to people. And what we need is, as you say, nicer politics. Politics that look after politicians and respect the job they do. You don't have to agree with them. But in fairness, they carry out their duties. They take it seriously. And you're right, whether it's the media, whether it's politicians, politicians, we've got to relook at this and start making people believe in democracy again. As I say, we always got to look to nicer politics right across the world. It's so important to us all. And so, Lindsay, very briefly, uh, if you would, what would be your message to people who are thinking about being MPs and, quite frankly, have been scared by what they've seen today? Don't give up on that hope and that aspiration to become a politician. Please. Democracy needs you. We've got to make sure democracy thrives. And we can't have people who live in fear of becoming a politician. We've got to give you support. Okay. We've got to overcome the challenges. We've got to make it a nicer place. We need more people coming into politics.